This video should hopefully be the biggest help for anybody that wants to grind a new line in World of Tanks Blitz. Getting credits and XP are some of the most challenging things available, and both of them are completely separate and individual resources. For example, to get my hands on, let's say, the Japanese heavy line I'm currently grinding, the Type 68, I need 3.45 million credits, which as you can see, I currently only have 700,000. But not not only do I need credits after researching the tank, I need to get experience on the vehicle to then upgrade the modules. But while getting these modules, I then need to get experience to grind the next tier, and after researching the tank, I still need an additional 9 million credits to upgrade the tank. When you've researched the type, the problem is if you don't have credits, then you have to go play in a premium. But if you've XP boosters on, then that premium is going to eat up a lot of your XP boosters, and instead of getting that XP on the vehicle like the Type 71 or grinding down a new line, you need to earn those credits for the next vehicle. So, in today's video, I will be sharing my ways of grinding down lines as fast as possible, and how to not only conserve your XP boosters, but as well make crap tons of credits. Let's get straight into it. Let's start off by talking about how to acquire boosters and how these can massively help you grind down lines. As you can see, I have a bunch of times three boosters. In fact, I think I have like 50 of them throughout grinding this past week. Getting these boosters is pretty dang easy, and there's multiple different ways to get your hands on them. The first way we have is the free containers. As you can see, there are small containers, big containers, and huge containers. Every week, you will get one free huge container. Every three days, you'll get one big container, and every day you will get three small containers. Now, these small containers can contain orders, which will give you the opportunity to get two times three boosters or two times four boosters with orders. You can get this three times a day. The big containers can contain gold, and once again, more orders with two times four boosters. And the large container, while you probably don't just want to get that, once again, has the exact same chance of giving you these orders. So just alone, the free containers give you the opportunity to get free things. But it gets better. If we make our way over to the missions tabs, there are many different ways of getting these boosters. We can take a look here and see that the first crate you open gives you 30,000 credits and small boosters all around, which is okay. The second crate, once again, has these same orders. The same ones as the crates we just took a look at. And it's the exact same case for the next crate as well. These are all daily containers. You can grab all these just by playing the game. So again, very easy to get your hands on boosters. We can also see these are available here in all of these orders as well. So I've already gotten quite a few of these myself just from grinding daily crates, completing my weekly crates. It's a super easy way to get your hands on times three and times four boosters. We also have the battle pass. Instead of getting a chance to get these orders, the battle pass guarantees that within the first 21 stages, you will get your hands on three free times three boosters on stage five, on stage 13, and stage 21. So so these are very nice. You also get some free XP, you get some credits in the process. The Battle Pass is a fantastic way of making a bunch of credits and just getting a bunch of XP. Especially because if you make it to stage 41 on the Battle Pass, you will get 25% research certificate for Tier 7. Stage 47 will give you a Tier 8 research certificate, 53 will give you a Tier 9, and 50. 9 will give you a tier 10. These research certificates are massive. You can combine them to get 50% off if you do two battle pass, but I usually recommend just to use the 25% off. They're very easy to complete. You just need to complete your missions weekly. You don't even need to pay for the premium pass. You just get these free, which is actually really nice for wargaming. I'm not going to lie. But the final way to get your hands on these boosters is by the clan missions. These are available every week. And these clan mission containers are absolutely fantastic. They have a 45% chance to drop boosters. We can see right here, there's a 45% chance to get times three boosters. I can get up to three of them, which is actually really, really nice. There's another crate here, which is more of a common clan container, but it can still contain with around a 
45% chance, one or two times three boosters. And then you've got the large clan container, which while not being able to contain the large XP boosters, still does have combat credit or free XP boosters and has a guaranteed drop chance of credits and free XP upwards of 5,000, which is actually pretty nice. So overall, you can very easily get your hands on experience just by grinding. We can also see that you can get this experience just by grinding down these clan events with your friends, getting 20,000 free XP on the last stage, 300,000 credits, 30 rare combat XP boosters. So just overall really easy ways of getting credits. The final way to do this is also technically events. Events are a great way of getting credits and other things. I've already completed the VK event, but I can tell you for a fact that this not only gave me a bunch of boosters, but it also gave me, if I'm not mistaken, like 10 times 3 boosters as well. So in general, grinding is the best way you're going to make these boosters. Now, once you get your hands on these boosters, you need to make sure that you have adequate tanks to use them on. Right now, I'm stuck in a pretty poor position where I don't actually have tanks to use these boosters on, and this is something that you want to keep in mind when you're grinding down any line. Like, if we take a look at my tech tree, I just researched my mouse. I needed credits, so I just got my hands on it. But the problem is I also need credits to get my hands on the Type 68. I don't have any other lines I'm currently grinding. I mean, I do have the 40 5 TP unlocked, but again, I need credits, and I have the P43 unlocked, but I need credits. All of the lines I've unlocked, I need credits for. So always make sure that if you have times three boosters at your disposal, or you're going to open crates that could possibly give you them, make sure that you have a line that you can already be grinding with these boosters, or maybe even two lines. Like if I purchase the 45 TP and the Peter, then I would be getting both of these lines researched with the boosters. And then once I'm out of the boosters, I can go back to grinding credits. And then once I get more boosters, I can go back to playing in tech tree tanks like the 45 TP and the Peter. So that's what I would suggest to do when it comes to these boosters. It's a very easy way to make use of them. Not only that, but when it comes to credit earnings, it doesn't actually matter what you use these boosters on. Like, if we make our way over to boosters, we can see I've got a crap ton of credit boosters. I've got uh, 674 of the small ones, which I'm actually going to combine. That means 802 of the large ones, which now I'm going to combine into 513 epic credit boosters. These are great. And it doesn't matter if you use them on a premium tank or a standard tech tree because it's a random 10 to 50,000 uh, credits every battle you play. So if you're playing at a premium, it's not like you're getting an additional chunk. Uh, you can just play tech tree and get the same amount of credits. So my suggestion, just put these on whenever you're playing. No matter what, just use all of them. I usually combine them to epic. You'll get more technically if you play with the commons, but... I don't really care about the commons because they don't give me enough of a boost to really notice. So I just play with the uh, the epic credit boosters, and that's the same thing for the XP as well. I got 502 combat XP boosters, I got 549 free XP, and again, I got a bunch of these XP boosters as well I can combine. So right now, I'm pretty well off when it comes to these boosters. You might be asking how I get all of them, and it's the same answer, completing weekly clan missions, completing events making sure that I get correct bundles with my gold that I have very limited access to on my free-to-play account from obviously watching gold ads, Microsoft awards, things like that. Opening crates will actually give you great ways of getting these boosters. Like for example, right now I have 1800 gold and I can actually showcase this right now because I think collect them all containers are actually a great way of using your XP. Open and collect them all containers, you're going to notice, will give you either premium XP or XP boosters. I got two times four boosters from this crate. I actually got a TS5 from that crate. Very interesting. Uh, opening up the next crate, again, I got times three boosters. So this is once again, just another great way of getting these XP boosters. Collect them all containers not only give you premium time, but they're very cheap. Only about a week's worth of watching gold alone will get you like three, four collect them all containers. And add that into the fact that they can give you random drop chances for tanks. Like we literally just watched me get my hands on a TS5. Now this isn't anything special. It's not even a tank I really think that too much of, but it's still pretty cool. I just got a tier eight for opening a 1500 gold bundle. So even though crates are bad for the game, 
They are good if you're free to play like myself and trying to get these boosters and trying to grind down lines faster. They're a good resource to get premium time and other things like that. So it's actually one of the things I can recommend to do. Now, I wouldn't say spend all of your gold on these containers, but if you need premium time and you're out of it or you want to get XP boosters, it's much smarter to get collectible containers than just using your gold to convert XP. So that is what I will say. Finally, we have grinding tanks. What is the most effective way to do so? Well, if you're going for credits and you're a decent player, the best way to actually grind is in pubs. Regular games average about three minutes. And in a three minute battle, if you get, let's say, a second or first class in a tier 10, even if it's not a premium, but let's say it is a premium, right? Let's say it's a concept. If you get a second class or a first class in the concept 1B, you will probably make easily over 100k credits every single game because getting a second class will give you about a 40,000 credit bonus just from the award. If you get a high caliber, it's a 50,000 credit bonus. If you get a mastery, it's 100,000 extra credits. So if you're decent at the game, grinding tech tree vehicles is really good if you play them in pubs because if you get awards, you can massively increase the amount of credits you make. It's one of the suggestions I always give. In fact, literally when I was streaming just the other day, playing in mad games. I was showcasing how literally I was making less credits in mad games with my tech tree chise than I was just playing in pubs because I was getting awards in pubs and I wasn't getting those in mad games. However, there's one game mode that I figured I'd finish off the video with that is the best for grinding credits, period, and that is Big Boss. Big Boss is insane for making credits, and I'm going to showcase that right now with this Mullendike battle for my Concept 1B. This is just a crazy game. It's a five minute battle, and in this span of five minutes, I think I make upwards of 270,000 credits. Now, I am running a credit booster, but still, that is 270,000 credits I'm able to make in an incredibly short burst of time. And it showcases just how good it is to be able to make credits with big boss mode. So usually what I recommend to do is just kill yourself over and over and over until you get the, I don't know what the ability is called, but we're going to call it poison shot because I think that's what it is. Just, oh, well, I guess it's catalyst. It says it right in the corner. Doy. But uh, with catalyst, you will deal massive chunks of damage. And I got lucky enough to get it right at the beginning. But if you get like healing or Bomber's okay, I will say that. Bomber's also really good. But for the most part, if you get healing or grab a trap at the beginning of your life, just drive into the open and die. Losing your team one life isn't going to be the end of the world. Trust me, the bad teammates on your team is going to lose a lot more. When you get something like Catalyst, and you're able to constantly keep using it over and over as you're leveling up to level 2, to level 3, to level 4, it allows you to deal so much damage in the early game. You're not only making a huge impact on the enemy because of the damage you can deal, but at the same time, you are also just getting massive chunks of damage to get credits in. So as we can see, I'm already up to 3,000. And I'm going to start shooting this boss, Fosh. We're going to hit him with a heat shell because I need to be able to pen him. But look at the catalyst damage. I'm absolutely chunking him. We're going to aim it on the Fosh again. Two seconds, one second. Unfortunately, I don't get the catalyst shot into the Fosh. But that's fine because, as you can see, we're already at level three on it. And if we get just one or two more shells into our opponents, we're going to stack this catalyst to another level level up. So we got 15 more seconds before we can use the ability again. Now something else I can say is to use uh, cooldown boosters with this event. I'm currently not using cooldown boosters, but it is a fantastic way of getting the catalyst and other abilities back even faster. So we shoot the i7 for 495, 669 on the second tap, 843. Now we're going to shoot the AMX to finish him off. Now even though we are only 100 and three health. It's not going to stop us from dealing massive chunks of damage. If we pen one more shell, our catalyst will be at level five, which means once again, we can start dealing more damage. We've been able to deal 6,600 in our first life, and it's literally just a great example of how you can deal so much damage in one life with catalyst capabilities. So now we're going to shoot at the side of the Fosh. Unfortunately, the shell doesn't pen, but that's fine. It still gives us enough points to level up our gun to max level. We get the Fosh for 500, then our catalyst Catalyst ticks him for 700, then 900, then another 200. Then we shoot him again. He's losing more health at this point. Another 1,200 off of his vehicle. We shoot him again. Now we've ticked off 1,200, 1,400. Now we're going to shoot the IS-7. Now we've ticked him with Catalyst. We have just brought our count from what you saw of 6,000 to 11,800. That is absolutely insane. And it showcases just why Catalyst is the best ability, period.
Bomber is great, don't get me wrong. There are certain moments where you can rush into like four or five tanks with Bomber and literally bring your damage total up to like 8,000, 9,000. But Catalyst is just the easiest way to farm damage without really having to worry. We get a nice 641 max roll to the enemy Fosh. Just like that, we are now up to 14,000 damage because we also Catalyst hit him. So 14k. Then we get super lucky. We get Bomber on our second life. So at this point, I'm going to make my way into the front line and we're going to see if we can bomb anybody. So let's see. We got the 50 TP. All right. We got the AMX 30. Well, I'm not going to shoot until my invisibility wears off because I don't want to lose my speed boost. So we shoot the 50 TP once. We're up to 14,300 damage and we're going to shoot him. Oh, not one more time. I wasn't going to use my bomber there because obviously bomber is a super, super important ability and you really only want to use it when you know you can deal massive chunks. So we're going to shoot at the IS-7. It bounces. But really what I want to do right now is just make sure I can do that. 1246 damage shot into that enemy IS-7, bringing us up to 15,500. Now we've got the enemy Fosh in front of us. We're going to start shooting him. Unfortunately, our shell goes a teeny bit too high. It doesn't actually end up going where I want it to. But that's fine. In 10 more seconds, we're going to have Bomber back, which means we just need to wait 10 seconds before we can absolutely ruin this guy's day. So here we go. 3, 2, 1, and... Boom! There you go. 1,240 damage on both of these vehicles, bringing our total up to 18,000. Now we're going to shoot up this Fosh from the rear. I was going to HGM, but nah, it's not even worth it. We'll just fire standard shells into his tank. A little bit of a low roll at 350, but nothing we can't deal with. Now we're going to shoot at the Fosh one more time. A bonk. Nice 370 roll. And in four more seconds, we're hopefully going to be able to use our bomber once again. Three, two, one. Boom. We blow up the AMX, and unfortunately, we're not able to finish off the Fosh, but I don't really think it matters. We have dealt 22,530 damage in this game. This was an incredibly short five minute battle. That's the equivalent of about one and a half normal pub games. In this amount of time, we were able to farm an insane amount of credits. And you're going to see that in just a moment. So we look at the post-game results, 270,000 credits. That is insane. And it showcases just how quickly you can make credits with Big Boss. But it's not just credits. It's also XP. I made 17,000 XP from a times 3 booster because these games count much more than a regular game. So if you have times 3 boosters, I would highly recommend to use them in game modes. They are the best by far to getting these big rewards with XP as you can see. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you would like to see more like it in the comments, and hopefully this helps you out. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.